I told you I'm bougie now. Another couch. I have two couches. Like, adult. Hey, I'm Lola Zuai, and I'm about to take you on a journey from how it started to how it's going. Let's do it. My first mode of transportation when I moved to New York, city bike. I just didn't think I needed a car in New York, so this is how I was whipping it most of the time. The pixelated image really represents what I was feeling and going through at the time, money-wise. Very pixelated wallet. But um, this was on tour, and I got it from a story. Somebody wished me a happy birthday, and this was the video they posted. Okay. Oh, shit. This is me and actually my, you know, my first car. A gorgeous Barbie whip, pink Suzuki with my 50 cent shirt, big contrast, high highs to Lolo's. Took me really great places, you know, when I was inebriated, but I didn't drink and drive, it was just for the photo. So when I first was dreaming of getting a car, I wanted a vintage Chevy Impala, and then I realized that that wasn't really great for the environment, so then I was like, I want a Tesla. And so when I moved to LA, you know what I did. I had to do it. I got a Tesla. Woo! This is my baby. We call her Miss Puff for Jigglypuff, my alter ego. And this is me in the frunk. I don't know if you know about the frunk. It's a trunk in the front. Elon Musk is hilarious when it comes to the names. This is when I first got it. And it wasn't like lolo-fied yet, but now it has pink flames on it, pink handles, pink interiors. I didn't buy it, I leased it. I felt amazing, like I've never, it's my first car. Like it's the first car that I've ever owned to myself that wasn't a Honda Accord from my dad that he said he bought for 40 bucks and then found 20 bucks in it, so it was only 20 bucks. How it started, how it's going, baby. My style back in San Francisco was just like, Thrift. I just love everything vintage and old because nobody else has it. It's really unique. And now, I mean, I still thrift a lot, but brands, you know, send me stuff. And so I'm kind of bougie now. What can I say? Whew. Oh man. So this, when I first moved to New York, I was living in a one bedroom with my mom and I was, you know, working at Bear Burger, a burger restaurant making milkshakes. So I needed to make extra money and I was really good at thrifting. So I ended up just selling everything on Depop. And like now that I look back, I was just selling stuff for way too cheap, like $10. This shirt could have been 45, you know? But back in the day, Depop wasn't the same. So yeah, Depop really held it down for a while. Ooh, you guys really dug deep for this one. That was looking good. So this was in my second apartment in New York, which was at Kid Super, which is a house with like five dudes, real messy. And I lived in here with my best friend, Hannah. And it was like two girls in a room. It felt like a dorm. But um, this was also a, a photo from my Depop. And it's a skirt from American Apparel, which I was selling because I used to work there. Since Depop was really just helping me out back in the day with the, it was like $300 a month, which was a lot. I actually did a campaign with Depop. And. It was sweet. It's pretty awesome that I can go from just selling clothes on Depop to officially collaborating with them and, you know, helping each other out now. I'm proud. Growing up, all I listened to was E40 and Too Short, because I grew up in the Bay. And so I had all of their albums. I actually met them one time and like Too Short signed my shirt and I took a picture with them. And so my dream was to collab with E40. And uh, I did it. And I always do like E40 impersonations. So this is how that happened. I dressed up as E40 in my apartment and this is what came out of it. When I get up in them sheets, bitch! Blue and yellow for the warriors. I wrote that. Everybody thought it was a, a, an actual E40 verse, but it was a it was a freestyle, and he liked it. And so that was our first Instagram interaction. And now you know, now we're friends. Now I have his number. He gave me the greatest verse of all time. He gave me like bars and bars and bars, and he was real heartfelt. Sometimes, 
sometimes if, I've, if I'm ever like feeling down, I tell myself, okay, if I were 15 right now and I saw myself today, I'd be like, bitch, you're good. Stop tripping right now. But of course, I'm Pisces, I can't stop tripping, ever. Shout out E40. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So this was my too short poster, signed. Uh, Life is too short to Loreen, my name. Met him uh, when I was 16 and I actually met my first boyfriend the same night, first love, so that was fate. Signed t-shirt, my first boyfriend brought me to meet him again and I got my t-shirt signed and he was like, how old are you? And I was 17. <laughs> This was my best friend's painting. Hannah, she's really talented. I love her art, so we had this up. She was obsessed with pinup dolls, and so we had a calendar. And then you can see here, it's just a mess, which is, yeah, how my life is always. And then this is my Songwriters Hall of Fame. I forget what the name of the award is, but I know John Legend won it one time. So you know it's legit. So yeah, that was my life. This is my living room. I bought an L couch, which is some real adult shit. I never thought like I could buy an L couch and I somehow did and it's really cozy. I got my pillows from Ikea. I got my too short vinyl still. Gotta keep it real. But my house is like this colorful playland now and my room was never as big as this living room. I'm very proud of that. I live in a two bedroom apartment by myself and it's like 1,300 square feet, so it's really big. I got washer dryer, I got a dishwasher, I got a porch, a shower. <laughs> All me, and I live alone. Very proud of that. Let's go, I don't need no roommates. Uh -uh. In high school, I was really, really into Sky Ferreira, and she had this video of her, it was like a handheld video for this song, Everything is Embarrassing. And she just looked so beautiful. It was in black and white, and it was just like clearly her and her friend going around. And I was like, ah, oh, that's all you need for a music video. All you need is like the emotion of the song. And so when I first made my song so real, I had, you know, no budget. I was independent. And my best friend Hannah, who I ended up living with, she had a VHS camera. And I was like, let's shoot it on this, and let's shoot it in my favorite thrift store in San Francisco called Thrift Town. And so that's what we did, and it came out amazing. It was in 2017. Put the subtitles under, you know, it was a whole vibe. And so that was my first video, So Real. I'm so real. I'm so real. Yeah, I'm so real. So this video, I put it together. It was just me going around the thrift store, being cute, being silly, and it was just this beautiful time in my life where there was no pressure and there was nobody knew who I was. Timothy Chalamet at the time, he had like 9,000 followers. I probably had the same amount. And he DM'd me and he was like, yo, so real, so fire. And I was like, thanks, dude. And then like, that was kind of it. And I recently posted the screenshot on Twitter and everybody was like, you fucked that one. <laughs> Anyways, we've come a long way from this kind of video. Obviously signed to a label, got some money, got a little bag. So now the last video I put out, Gally Bet, is like the most amazing video I've ever, I've ever made. Okay, this video is so crazy because we have the UCLA women's gymnast team. I'm boxing underwater. I got mobsters next to me and I look like Dr. Evil, but hot. And I'm a French bombshell with Algerian money strapped to my body. When I was working with the UCLA gymnast team, and some of them were like former UCLA gymnasts, they had never been in a music video and I was like so amazed that they wanted to be in my video. And Joya Jackson, she choreographed it and we were all just like dancing and it was my first time doing choreography and I was just, I felt like so much female empowerment and I was like, Who's done this? Who's ever done, like, who's done this? Nobody. The director of the video, Amber Grace Johnson, she just always had this idea of an underwater boxing match. 
I was like, how are we gonna do this? This sounds crazy expensive. We found a motel that was down to let us shoot and um, she had all the references and she was like the main mastermind behind it, but I definitely was involved in like the characters and about the different type of characters that I wanted to show in the video. And she, I just love working with women because they understand how women look good. Yeah, like, like in that scene where I'm in a suit, that's my favorite look. Like, I look badass, kind of scary, but, but hot. Wow, so this moment is the perfect representation of the high highs to low lows tour. Our tour driver got stuck in the middle of that main street, like sunset or something, and we stopped traffic for like 30 minutes. And this is a tweet that actually happened. It says, I don't know who this Lolo Zuai girl is, but she's blocked two whole green lights and has lost many potential fans here in LA. And I was like, hello, Hunter. I'm so sorry about the delay. I'd love to invite you to my concert tonight if you wanna come, uh, bring a friend. He showed up to the concert and then he DM'd me and was like, girl, your music is fire. I'm so glad you blocked the street and now he's a fan. At the end of 2019, when the tour ended, I got a DM from Dua Lipa's manager and they were like, hey, do you wanna come on tour for Dua next year? And it was right before her album came out. And I was like, immediately, yes. Like, absolutely, that sounds amazing. And then we announced it in 2020. My life was about to be And then COVID. But, good news, the tour is still happening next year, so. Mwah. So, from 300 people rooms, to blocking the street in LA, to arenas, we made it. <laughs> Once again, I'm Lola Zuai, and I just wanna thank you for following me, and just wait to see what happens next, cause it can only go up.